What's up? My name is Thomas. I equip dads to become revered leaders within their home, and a huge piece of that is maintaining and building intimacy with our wife. A woman's burning desire is the number one factor in the success of a thriving relationship. Today, we're gonna cover seven cold, hard mistakes that men are making that kill their intimacy. The goal of this video is not to trick women. The goal of this video is to equip you with the skills that you need to become the man that she's desiring. Now, disclaimer on me. I was not a stud in high school. I did not start on the football team. I was actually riding the bench most of the time. I knew how to work hard, and that was about it. I was, frankly, a spaz. I had no understanding of female nature. I had no understanding of how to talk to girls. I had no understanding of what I needed to do to be successful with girls. I was a single dad for three years before I met my now current wife. And these things that we're gonna to cover today have helped me continue to thrive within our marriage, despite her playing stepmom and a lot of the other challenges that come along with being a dad and having a home, having a job and kids and all the responsibilities that we have. There's things that we can do each day that will optimize our desire that we're receiving and the quality of the experience with our wife. If you don't have a pen, grab a pen and pad, let's drop in. Number one, asking what she wants. This is a very easy trap to fall into. I have a lot of clients that have struggled with talking to their wife, they find out what she wants them to do, they do the task, she still seems like she's upset. And there's a very fine line and a difference between asking and listening, knowing, and taking that action through confidence. And here's the difference. When we listen to small cues and subtle hints that our wives give us, that are very much more of the feminine. The feminine is much more about the experience and the process. Masculine is about, did it get done? Did we score the basket? Great. I don't care if everybody touched the ball and it was a great play. Like we scored, that's what matters. The feminine, the experience is everything. So we could go through the same date night, but if you take her through the experience based on what you've listened to that she's desiring, the restaurants, the way that you touch her, the way that you come home. Ultimately, as women, they want us to just get it. What does it mean when we just get it? Well, what it means is along the line when they drop subtle hints, listening to what type of food they like, where they like, what do they like to go hiking? We need to, in a lot of ways, understand our wife better than she understands herself. So when we have to go out for a date and we can make a decision of, I know she likes Mexican food, I'm going to choose a Mexican restaurant and we are going to go there. That puts us in a space of confidence because we're reading what she's giving us. We're reading between the lines and we're making a concise, swift, confident decision. There's confidence when we just make a decision and we don't have to ask. We are taking on the masculine. We are taking on the leadership role and it allows her when we don't have to ask what she wants to do or what she'd like it allows us to break on this confidence and the masculine role so that she can be relaxed and lean into her feminine energy. Before we go to the next point, if you're getting value from this video, please hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe to stay up to date on content to help you become a revered leader within your home. Let's continue. Number two, we stop dating our wife. There are two things that separate being intimate and being roommates. Dating and sex. Two equations. If you're not doing both of those to the maximum possible, we have a lot of distractions. We're dealing with other, you're a dad, you're dealing with kids, you're dealing with schedules. We've got to prioritize and make sure we champion taking our wives out on dates, going into experience. It's not just about being outside the bedroom. How we show up outside the bedroom, if we show confidence and trust, it's gonna transfer into the bedroom. Do you know how to make a plan? Are you able to have a good time? Are you able to smile, laugh, not take things too seriously? All these things are leading up. Like we talked about in the last point, the feminine energy, it's a lot about the experience, about the buildup, about the anticipation. It's not about just the event. Everything has to stack up to make the exciting, the exciting and uncertain experience. It's almost like women want to be dropped into a mystery story because I guarantee you, if you look at mystery sales on Amazon and you were to go through and, ca through and calculate 
you know, who's buying most of these mystery books. I guarantee you a lot of it is the feminine energy. We want concrete. We want understandable. We want to know what's going to be happening. They want to be swooped into an adventure, and you're the guy that's going to take them there. Number three, failing to plan. Now, I taught middle school PE for seven years, and I saw as in the school system, kids and we all as adults are conditioned to be followers. This is the plan, follow directions, go along with the flow. Now, all of a sudden, you're dropped into a marriage, into a leadership role as a dad, and you've got to set the plan. There's nobody else. There's no teacher. There's no mom. There's no dad. You are the guy. You are the leader within the home. We've got to be able to formulate a plan, whether that's how to pick up the kids from school, how to help keep the house clean, how to organize your workout routine, how to uh, set up a date night. All of these things are critical. We've got to be able to create and execute plans as dads, as dads who lead. If we're not able to do this, we will inevitably surrender leadership over to our wives, which is a role that takes her out of her feminine energy and, and decreases the polarity and intimacy within our experience. So it's very critical if we're failing to plan on a regular basis and set that tempo that we put that as a skill set that we develop. Again, see it as a skill set, not as an on or off switch, but how well am I planning and how can I improve my skill? Number four, telegraphing. Now, I wrestle in high school. I continue to wrestle and compete in jiu-jitsu. And one of the big things we work on is telegraphing or not telegraphing our moves. And when we're telegraphing a move, it's like, oh, this person's very clearly about to grab my leg. I can see they're looking right at it. I'm able to predict and see what's going to happen before it does. The same thing happens with our wife. So if we're telegraphing everything that we do, like, hey, I'm going to pick the kids up from school. I'm going to pick up A, B, and C from the grocery store, and then I'm going to take you out on a date, and we're going to go here, and then we're going to go here. It makes takes them out of the experience. It takes them out of the experience of being feminine. When you're taking her on a date, be as subtle and give her as little information as possible. She will hate this at first, but she will love it in the end. You're going to say, hey, I'm taking us out to dinner. So you say, great, where are we going? Don't worry about it. Just trust me. We're going to have a good time. Oh, we're going to dinner? I don't know where we're going, but he's swooping me into this adventure. Now there's mystery to it. It seems like the smallest thing for her to not know what re restaurant that she's going to, but it circles back around to you know what restaurant she likes. She's trusting and submitting to you that you're going to create a plan and you're going to deliver an adventure that's exciting and fun. In the comments, let me know why is it important to avoid telegraphing when we're pursuing intimacy. Number five, accepting average fitness. Now, if we want a fantastic experience and performance from our wife, we've got to perform at our end as well and deliver a fantastic experience. This goes way beyond aesthetics. It's going to change in your mind first. It's going to change your mindset. When we engage in strength training, and preparing our body to be not just average, but an, an athletic level. It shifts our mindset from just getting by to we're here to, with a purpose. Our body is here on purpose. Our body is a vessel. A, it's not just floating through when we put ourselves into the top tier of fitness levels. And I don't mean that you've got to look like a magazine cover. You've got to take care and make your fitness competitive. Today in 2023, there are three categories you can be in physically. Number one, you can be a worker. You can be an electrician, a construction worker. You have a job where you're physically engaged, you're using your body on a regular basis, and that's going to generate fitness for you. Number two, you have a sedentary job. You sit a lot during the day and you fall into the trap of just surviving physically, you might be monetarily taking care of your needs, but your physical primal need of, of caring for your body has been lost. And number three, you're an athlete. Now, I fall into this category where my job isn't physically demanding. I used to be a PE teacher and that was more, I was more active in that job. Now, as I coach dads, I don't need to move around as much. 
So my engagement in being an athlete is significantly more. That means strength training. That means competing in my sport. For me, it's jujitsu and preparing and training. So you've got to decide which of those three are going to be. You're either fit and active with your job, you're either sedentary, or you're an athlete. Now, yes, you can work out. I mean, like going for walks, jogs, and like casual recreational, but that's not going to get you to the level of being an athlete, of being like top tier ability to perform, maxing out your testosterone, maxing out your looks, maxing out your muscle tone for your wife so that you're bringing a fantastic experience. She's got to look at 20 guys and know that you're the best one that she can get. Like that's the cold, hard truth. She's got to know like, wow, all right, my dude can hang with anybody because of the discipline and self-discipline he has. So if this is something you're struggling with, this is like the first thing that we've got to tackle as men is making sure that we're winning the battle with ourselves first. We cannot expect to win a battle and attract a woman towards us or chase a woman. We've got to take care of ourselves first. Take care of your fitness first. That will attract the woman in more than us going out and chasing her. Number six, and I cannot believe I even have to put this on, dogs. Dogs in the bed. I love dogs. We've got a five-year-old Brittany, and my son's got a nine-year-old Pitbull. They're fantastic. They're not in the bed with us, okay? If you have a dog that's sharing the bed with you, it is 100% going to affect how well you're able to connect with your wife. There's obviously the instant barrier of the three of you are in the bed, her attention is going to be split between you and the dog. Instead of you being the alpha in the room, now you've got this competition. Now, you can simply tell the dog to kick rocks and sleep in a crate or on the floor, and now her anything that she needs physically that emotional side, if she needs to cuddle, if she needs your physical attention, it's you. It's not a dog. What's going to happen when Jack says, hell no, I'm not sleeping with a dog in my bed? What's the result? Leave a comment. What's going to be the outcome if you set up boundaries and you are able to say no? Number seven, trading chores for sex. Never trade chores for sex. This takes the woman out of the space of genuine desire. It puts you into the space of being a servant to her. It puts you into the space of, it puts her in the space that, well, I guess I have to do this because he took out the trash and did the dishes. So I guess I'm doing this. It's very critical that we always want, if we're having an intimate experience, we're putting her in the space of genuine desire and not just taking it for whatever it has. It puts you in the space of your trading chores for sex. It makes you seem desperate. It makes you seem like you will do whatever you need to be able to get that and that you're not of high value, that sex is of a scarcity to you and you're willing to do anything, including scrubbing toilets to get it. Number eight being a yes man. It's very easy to fall in this trap. Yes men say yes to everything. They have such a desire to serve and help others that it obscures their own ability to create a mission for themselves and have direction. So it's critical. Yes, communicate with your wife, help out what and what's needed around the house. Uh, I'm not saying to not work as a team. I'm not saying not to communicate. But what I am saying is if it's simply a one way, your wife telling you what to do and you do it all the time, it's a dangerous trap because it shows that you're not on purpose. So it's very critical. Just as I said on the last point, we're able to say no and we're able to back it up. It's not just to say, no, I'm not doing that. Because like you need to be able to back it up. You need to explain no and this is why because I am working on whatever it is, this is a priority, this is important to me, or it's no, and I can do it after I'm done with whatever the, my other priority is, or I can put it on my list for tomorrow. If you are just constantly saying yes, it shows that your mission is weak, that you're not really sure of your direction and your confidence, and this isn't something that your wife may be able to articulate to you directly, but it's all 
subconscious. It's all subconscious of where is your life going and how strong is your force and your direction in your heart and what your spirit is driving you towards. There's a song by Tim McGraw called Just to See You Smile. And he's talking about all the things that he does for his girl just to see her smile and make her happy. Uh, but if you listen to the song really closely, at the end of the song, you find out that she's left him. And he's like, I'll, I'll just say that I'm happy to see you with a new guy just to see you smile. That's how much I care about you. And if we want to fall into this trap of just making her smile all the time, that is exactly what's going to happen. I know that is a cold, hard truth bomb, but it is reality. We've got to be able to love, but also love within the framework that we're our own man and we have our own purpose. If you're a dad and you're losing traction with women and you're losing traction with your kids, I'm going to be launching a course to help dads become revered leaders within their home. This is something I've been working with my clients on one-on-one -on -one for a long time. I am limiting this course to 10 dads. I'm looking for dads who are serious about putting in the work and creating a transformation for themselves and for their families. I expect it to fill up very quickly. I'm gonna leave a link in the top pinned comment to get on the waiting list. It's free to be on the waiting list. You'll get more information about the course and content. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button so you get up to date on our latest content and we will see you in the next episode. Peace.